Hello viewers, beer drinkers, and craft brewers. Thanks for watching. This is JR Juan Roberto. Thanks again for watching and this is the very first video of many more. So stay tuned and please subscribe. Thanks. just mashed in at 123 and now we're going to check our temp we mashed in like three minutes ago Here's our oil kettle ready to do the sparging in. We're going to put our grain back inside and sparge inside the oil kettle. There's our chill down tank to put our kettle in when it's time to start the chilling phase. But first we got to transfer the grain bag to the oil kettle to start the sparging. Now you got the curtain rod overhead. Don't forget your S hook and you use the curtain rod to help you hold the grain bag because the grain bag will be heavy. This is only 10 pounds, 14 ounces of grain, but once you get it wet, it weighs about double that. So if you got 20 pounds of grains, you're gonna be dealing with about 40 pounds. So use the rod, it's definitely helpful. Now usually when you're brewing in a bag, B-I-A-B, you usually don't do a sparge phase, but I always do a sparge phase regardless. It helps with efficiency and to get all your sugars and starches out of that grain bag and into your boil kettle. Now I don't show it often here, but you really want to squeeze, but you mostly want to twist that bag on the rod when it's hanging from the S hook. Twist it, you're also squeezing all the water and sugars out. So it's best to twist the bag on the rod and that will simultaneously squeeze all your juices out. Now we kept the hops and the bitterness to a minimum, so I only used one ounce of Saz hops from the Czech Republic at 2.9% alpha acid. Here's another weed out. You can see right there with the green nuts. I'm going to ramble some bacon. Now instead of using orange peels, I ended up using some mandarin peels that were fresh. So I used two whole mandarin peels, but they were small mandarins. It seemed to work well.
Now I usually use the copper coil work chiller, but in this case it wasn't needed because I usually recirculate the cold pool water. And in this case I didn't have to do that. Man, it tasted great. It tasted like some honey bunches of oats with water in it instead of milk with a lot of sugar. most cases I use two different types of yeast or yeast starters. In this case I use the dry yeast and a liquid yeast. There she is, the Belgian Vite Beer Ale. Just nice and vigorous. Look at how beautiful this thing is. Very vigorous. It was a lot more vigorous a little while ago, but there she is. She's going off, obviously. Geese, they're doing their thing. You can hear her. So beautiful sounding.
Modeling is a lot of work and it's very tedious, but in the end it yields very nice results. Here we got 49 beers of the Belgian Beet Beer. Second taste testing. I just had to get another couple more shots in there. The head is beautiful. Belgian V. Thank you once again, craft brew lovers. Stay tuned for our next brew. It's going to be a Finder's Brown Ale. And now, Brown, thanks again. Please like and subscribe. Don't forget, we're going to be brewing a double IPA and a session IPA as well in the future. Thanks again.